Ableton Review podcast slash YouTube video slash all encompassing entertainment people. We are here to entertain you. No, we're not here to entertain you, but we're here to talk about entertainment that might entertain you. And I'm Nate Simpleton. And I'm Charlie Simpleton. I'm Lemuel Simpleton. Yes, and we are the Simpletons, and we are here to give you the simplest review of all. This week, we are going to be talking about Pixar's brand new movie called Soul. It uh, released on Disney Plus on December 25th, Christmas Day. It was fighting tooth and nail against Wonder Woman on HBO Max. I tooth think, and nail. <laughs> yes, I think there are more people that probably watched Soul than Wonder Woman, simply because I think there are probably more people that subscribe to the Disney Plus than there are HBO yeah. Max. I think their advertising um, was a little better. Thank too. you, Mandalorian. Yeah, right? <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. I mean, Disney Plus is making some moves, but there's... So anyway, Soul was there. Pixar, as everybody knows, is just a... They're at the top of the game as far as animation is concerned. There's really no other animation company quite like them right now. They have been at the top of the game for 25 years. They're just an amazing company. Uh, Soul is a movie about a jazz middle teacher um, who has always dreamed about being a jazz, a professional jazz musician. He finally gets his big break, and he goes and tries out, gets his big break, and as he's walking home, he dies. And that's how the movie starts. It sounds depressing, but it's not. So he goes up to, uh, not heaven, but some sort of conveyor belt that's leading to the great beyond, which happens to be a bug zapper. <laughs> <laughs> and and it sounds just like a bug zapper, which is really funny. He's like, I ain't going there. No, nope, I'm not ready. I got my big shot, and I'm going to figure out a way to get back to Earth. So he goes down to the great before, I think is what they call it, if that's correct. They And he gets set up. He ends up becoming a mentor to a soul by the name of 22. 22 is a pain in the butt. Yes, 22 <laughs> does not want to go to Earth, would rather stay up, and has went through thousands and thousands of mentors, some of which include Aristotle, Mother Teresa. Who she made cry. Who she made cry <laughs> and said she, she cry, hated her. And Abraham Lincoln. Nietzsche, I think, was one of them as well. So he, she's went through a bunch of mentors to try to get her to go to Earth, and she has refused to do so. So will this middle school jazz teacher be able to convince her to go to Earth? Actually, he doesn't really want to convince her to go to Earth, but he does want to get her to help her to get her spark so he can then take her pass to go to Earth and fulfill his dream of being a professional jazz teacher. And then chaos ensues. <laughs> Charlie, what did you think of Soul? Soul was, it was a lot of fun. The whole spiritual thing was, you could tell that they, they went on some different layers to like try and make their story work. But it was just fun to watch. I mean, it was like, if you could get that out of your head, get all the contrivances out, it's like, you, it was kind of like the Freaky Friday thing. They had to kind of like see each other's lives to get, to get along. I love that Tina Fey was the voice of 22. Cause uh, you know, it's like, she, she like goes through the series of like, I could have taken this voice or this voice. But no, I'm going to take a middle-aged woman that's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> I Well, first of all, trigger alert for Christians out there. <laughs> There is a lot of philosophy, spiritual philosophy, epistemology, uh, existentialism, whatever you want to say, that goes on in this movie. So if you think, oh, well, my God, that's not how heaven works, or where's Jesus in all of this, then it's probably not the movie for you. Go watch God's Not Dead. You'll be a lot happier, okay? But if you don't mind dealing with philosophical ideas of the afterlife and things like that, and you have an open mind, check it out because it's a really good movie. So, Charlie, good points. Lemuel, what did you think about Soul? The art style in this movie was amazing. Mm, yes. The backgrounds looked realistic. The car uh, the characters will s were still cartoony. Um, I like how the cat was cartoony rather than kind of realistic like they went with in Toy Story 4. The weird animation for the for Jerry and Terry yeah. like how they were like kind of <laughs> well, a different animation from yeah, anything they were else. All Very cubism, right? I mean yeah, that was like a cubist yeah. idea right there. Uh, <laughs> the animation made me so happy and then of course it's Pixar and they just know how to kind of make you introspective and I really respected that. Yeah. Pixar has an interesting way of dealing with death this is not their first avenue into dealing with death and what happens when you die or even what happens in the brain i mean inside out was just as existential as this movie and in the, in the things that it dealt with you know obviously there was there was interesting things that they picked i thought in this movie that you know was very 2020 they, they picked basically an all-black cast which is interesting and my wife actually read a review today that they were mad and they were cringed because they said that a white lady was in a black man's body i'm like no 
a white lady was not in a black man's body. That soul was a soul. It wasn't white or black or brown or green or cat or dog or human. It was a soul. So that person, yeah. whoever it was, and I think it was some mainstream you know, movie reviewer, needs to go watch it again. It was just yeah. a soul. And I'm assuming- The whole she, thing was is that, yeah, yeah she cho chose the voice. It was the voice I was chosen. I'm assuming she's talking <laughs> about the fact that Tina Fey was playing the voice. Yeah. But Tina Fey was playing a voice. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of yourselves, people. Come on. <laughs> Jeez. But I absolutely, like Lemon said, the animation was incredible. The scene when they're in the classroom at the very beginning, the depth in there and the, the shadows, like from the sun shining through the windows, looked so stinking realistic. It was amazing. But the, the 3D, the depth that the, the cartoon had without the use of 3D was amazing. It was, it was so fantastic. good. Yes. And I, I felt too like um, there was a lot of, uh, especially at the very beginning, like when he hits the zone, when he's when he's <laughs> trying out and they, he goes into the existential world, you know? There was a lot of Fantasia-like stuff going on in this movie. Did you feel that? Yeah, I didn't think about I didn't think about that, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. exactly what it was. Yeah, there was a lot of that kind of, because, you know, it, it, the whole idea of Fantasia was animation put to music. And that's exactly what was happening in a lot of parts in this movie. I, I really, I really like that. And then, you know, the things like, like, like Charlie's talked about, where they deal with uh, just learning how to get along. Look, I, I think it, it it was just brilliantly done. The point of the movie was, you know, what what makes us human? What makes, you know, how do you live? Uh, yeah, what, do, does, yeah, what, what does, makes what life? Makes life? <laughs> I mean, what makes do we, life? Do we have a living? purpose or what is purpose, right? Um, does it matter if people remember who we are? You know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Those are the kind of thought process that you're going to deal with. And it's Pixar, right? They're children films. Although I would caution that if you have young children, there are some rather terrifying scenes in this movie. Oh, there, uh, there's a, like the lost souls. Yeah. And those things were actually slightly terrifying. Even for me, I, I was like, wow, this is, this is kind, of, <laughs> kind of scary here. You know? So be careful if you have really young kids before you watch Soul. I don't know. I, I asked this question last night when we watched it, Charlie, and I'm going to ask you how well, I, I know you've seen it once. We've all just had a chance to just just have that one time of viewing it but how do you think this is going to end up rating in the overall pixar library of pixar films? Yeah. i think that this is going to land upper middle i don't think it's going to like be outstanding for them because they've already got it's outside of their usual scale that's the thing is that the storyline and everything is out there outside their scale a little bit it doesn't mean that it's it's uh bad but it's it's not gonna rate like super high like the incredibles something like that's gonna like chart topper um just because everybody everybody's in tune with that i mean it's got every every like line of the family could could get it could arrange to it this one is has got a different target so i don't think it's gonna be a chart topper but it is gonna be high uh, just because the quality is fantastic, both in the thinking of putting it out and just uh, an overall, like, like I think it knocks out half of the Toy Stories. Yeah, <laughs> I'd give you that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's the thing, you yeah. know, it depends on the director. You know, I mean, this director that does uh, Soul is the same guy who did Inside Out. And uh, I don't know which other ones he did, but I know he did inside. I think it might have been up as well. Could be wrong on that. Um, the thing about Pixar films, except for the classics, you know, there's certain ones you're like, yeah, this is just great. This is fantastic. Uh, but there's some of them that are slow burners. I felt like Up was Wally. Wally. I, no, I still hate Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't like Wally. <laughs> but well, well, that's the thing is that yeah. it's it's like the first big existential story for. Yeah, him. yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I agree. It just kind of. Yeah, but it, like it was Up, low. I think yeah, Up was Up a was slow fantastic. burn. Like I don't think people were incredibly impressed with Up when it initially came out. When I watched it initially, I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty good." You know, I love Doug. Doug is great. But now watching it years later, I'm like, "This is one of the best Pixar movies ever made. It is so good." And I think Inside Out is starting to age that way as well. I think some people were like, yeah. eh, "I don't yeah. know what to think about this," but now they're like, "Inside Out is just incredible." You know, because yeah. it's thoughtful. This is going to rank on par with Up. I mean, easily. Inside Out again, another one that can like it. They they pinpointed and could nail down like so many things that that grabbed everybody's attention um soul doesn't do that soul works more like up 
it's gravitational. I mean, it's, it's like grabbing you and pulling you in for the ride. Yeah, I would probably say that Soul is probably one of the more adult movies they've ever made. Yes, yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Up, Up was another adult one. Yeah. Again, because dealing with But there was still a like kid crazy. in it, right? I mean, Up, yeah. even, it still had a kid in it. So there was something that kids could even relate to, and Doug was kind of the comic relief. I don't even know if Soul has that. I mean, it has an adult and, you know, the, the adult has a cat. <laughs> yeah, there's really no, like, child in the movie. And so I think for kids, it's going to be maybe a little hard to, to latch on to what the heck is going on. I think with what they were kind of trying to tell with a little bit too yeah because i don't think kids are really thinking about what their life means in any sort of sense they're just kind of trying to get through school and like have fun and they older. want lightning mcqueen baby <laughs> yeah. lightning mcqueen you get a little older gotcha, though gotcha. <laughs> thoughts always in the back of your head at least for me it's always like dad am i doing anything <laughs> here i am 46 years old <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear sweet baby Jesus. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and give our scores. Charlie, what did you think of Soul? I'm gonna give it a four and a half. Sweet. I thought it was. I thought it was good. Again, I I tick it down the half point because it did throw out the existential stuff that everybody's gonna balk at. It just kind of like they had to figure out a way to get it out there so that way they could have get the story rolling. Yeah. So I'll just ding it a half a point. But otherwise, it was good. Ding movie. it a half a point, huh? All right. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> right on, Mr. Lim. I think I'm going to agree with you. Go with the four of that half. Like, the art style is amazing. The music, the idea of having the jazz play while they're on Earth, and then the weird, like, techno playing when they're in <laughs> yes. the afterlife area. Like, I liked that idea I, and the existentialism, but also yeah. watching a cartoon, I don't know if I needed to deal with some of that stuff. <laughs> The music, the soundtrack is amazing. It's John Baptiste is the guy who did the music. It just, it's so good. It's really good. So look, I'm a jazz guy. I got uh, Miles Davis for Christmas LP vinyl, Bitches Brew. So good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm a jazz dude. Uh, and so jazz grooves my soul. And I really like the idea that jazz was kind of at the centerpiece of this whole thing. And it's a fantastic movie. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give it a 4.5 as well. 4.5 all the way around the table here at the Simpleton Review. It's certified. So that it's makes, certified. that makes so dun 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 simpleton certified right yes certified. simpleton certified so if you have disney plus which it sounds like a majority of you do these days <laughs> go check out soul on disney plus pixar's latest movie and you will not be disappointed especially if you like their more existential works like inside out and up and things like that that dealt with maybe a little bit more adult themes than what you'll find in cars or maybe even finding nemo for that matter things like that so Go check out Soul. You won't be disappointed. The color. Oh, my God. The color in that movie. <laughs> color was so good. Oh, geez. It was so good. Oh, I can't. I can't. I was I was in awe. I, I'm writing <laughs> notes down in this movie, and then I just stop, and I just watch it because I just like, so pretty. Like, the last movie I saw that was that pretty was probably The Life of Pi. I mean, just pretty, oh, that is gorgeous pretty colors good. in this movie. It was really good. So... Let's move on to uh, some pop culture happiness. Uh, who do I, let's see, I don't think I've started with Lemuel yet. Charlie, or Lemuel. <laughs> 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 let's do tennis. Lemuel, go ahead. What is your uh, happiness? All right. Well, I'm going to say mine's a little lame and pretty on par for the course, but the Game Awards were a couple weeks ago at this point, but one of the games they announced is a game called Back for Blood, which... For those who don't know, is the spiritual success for, successor to Left 4 Dead 2. Everybody's been kind of waiting for a Left 4 Dead 3. This isn't exactly it, because Valve isn't involved, but the company that made the original 2 in the first place is working on it. And the trailer made it look like a Left 4 Dead game. Like, it didn't look spectacular by any means, but it looked like Left 4 Dead, and that's all we really wanted, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, that'll be interesting. You gonna buy that game when it comes out? Oh, yeah, June 22nd. I'm getting it for my birthday. <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> he knows what date it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Charlie, what about you? What's making you happy? Uh, what's making me happy is that they're still making movies. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if everything is going to come to the theater like I hope it does, but I am looking forward to coming to America. To, well, coming to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. You know, uh, Drew Brown, uh, the guy that was a uh, guest host on our podcast last month, he texted me that trailer. He says, 
I am so excited. He's like, dude, this is so great. I'm like, I haven't seen this movie in 30 years. I don't even remember it. So, okay. He's like, dude, I was two years old when it came out. I'm like, yeah, shut up. You're just a young pup. But anyway, all right. So, yeah. So, Coming to America 2 is coming out. And does it have Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall in it? It does have Eddie Murphy. I didn't see if it had Arsenio Hall. I would imagine it does. Somebody mentioned that it does, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't read the cast list. Okay. I just got excited when somebody mentioned it at work the other day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I, I need to see it again. What's that? I guess I need to see it again because, I, like I said, I have not seen it since it, it came out. I don't remember it very well. I remember them coming in. I remember, like, a bath scene. Like, they're in a bath. Like, I think that might have been the very beginning of the movie when he's deciding to come to America. I don't remember. It's just all vague and it doesn't really stick with me. So I should probably go watch it again. <laughs> I do remember Eddie Murphy's accent, you know, it's really kind of funny. Arsenio Hall plays like his assistant or something, right? He's like, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I, I remember it, but it's just so vague. So I should probably watch it again. So coming to America. Coming two. to America. Is coming. Two. America. <laughs> right. Okay, so what's making me happy? I, I couldn't resist. I mean, this is uh, this is something that we just talked about. But the movie Soul is making me happy. I'm telling you, I I've been thinking about this for uh, since I watched it 24 hours ago, and I it's so good. And I'm gonna have to watch it again just to think about some of the thoughts and concepts that came up uh, during the movie. And and you know what makes a human human what makes you know what makes life worth living and, and uh, what's important what's not important these are all themes that are dealt with in this movie so even if you don't agree with the non-christian philosophical arguments those are christian themes nonetheless that are right there so uh, i would watch it regardless of your spiritual background it is it's it's worth the time it's worth the fun so that is what's what's uh, my pop, pop culture have an ass. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, my headphones are falling down. So, well, this has been uh, Simpleton Review. Uh, Soul Simpleton Certified. Go watch it. Heck yeah. Remember to subscribe, like, tell your friends about us. Go to our website, simpletonreview.com. Just do all things Simpleton. Buy some merch, promote us, tell all your friends about us, tell them if they're not watching us, then they're dumb. I think that's I think that's about all we got. So I'm Nate Simpleton. And I'm Charlie Simpleton. I'm Lemuel Simpleton. We'll see you next week. Have a great one.